Hi, my name is Nathan. You're watching Nice at Dice, and today I am playing Pandemic Hot Zone North America. This is kind of a stripped down, simplified, uh, sort of like beginner's version of Pandemic, popular cooperative board game that you may have heard of. Uh, so today I'm playing it using the solo rules. Um, I've played it a few times with a couple of friends over Zoom and um, so I'm already fairly familiar with the game, but I figured I'd give the solo rules a try. Uh, the solo rules are not included in the game, but you can download them for free from the publisher's website. So I'll put a link in the description to where you can get those rules if you're interested. Uh, but today I'm just going to be playing through the game, see if I can beat it solo, try out those rules. And I'll give you an idea as I'm playing it what's involved in the game um, in case you're unfamiliar with Pandemic in general, or the specific version of Pandemic. So we'll go over to the desk and now get right into the game. All right, so like I said, I'm playing with the solo rules. I have the game set up to do that. Um, the biggest difference between the uh, multiplayer rules and the solo rules is what's going on over here. So I'll get to that in a second, but let me just kind of explain in general what's going on in this game and the differences between this and the original pandemic. So in this game, you're trying to control the spread of diseases. You have three different diseases represented by three different colors of cubes. You can see some of those cubes are on the board in different spots. Each of these spots represents a city and it's connected to adjacent cities through these white lines. We have these player pawns. These are the different characters. Characters can move along the lines to the different cities and do different actions. Um, basically on a character's turn they get four actions. So one action could be, for example, moving. Another action could be treating the disease there, which removes a cube. Um, another action could be uh, sharing knowledge, which is basically manipulating these cards, moving them around. Um, and then if you are in Atlanta and you have four cards of the same color, you can cash in those cards to cure that disease, which you mark by moving this token here. After you've cured all three diseases, you've won the game. Uh, and that's the same in multiplayer mode or um, uh, solo mode. Uh, in multiplayer mode, it is a cooperative game. You're all working together to accomplish that objective. There are a few ways you can lose if the deck of player cards uh, runs out and you need to draw two cards at the end of your turn and there are not two cards to draw then the game is over. If uh, this uh, marker here, which represents outbreaks, ever gets to the bottom of that track, then you lose the game. Or if you ever would have to add cubes of a color and there are no cubes left in the supply, then you also lose the game. So you're trying to cure all three diseases before you get to any of those uh, ways that you could lose. Each character also has some special abilities that make them unique. I'll explain those a little bit as I use the different characters, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, and just to mention real briefly, uh, if you're familiar with Pandemic and you just are, have not had a chance to play Hot Zone North America, some of the differences are probably obvious. Um, there's only three diseases instead of four. Uh, you only need four cards of a color to cure the disease instead of five. You can't build research stations and you don't need to build research stations. You just have the one research station in Atlanta from the beginning and you have to go back there to cure all the diseases. Uh, the way you set things up is a little bit different. There's fewer cubes on the board at the beginning of the game. Um, and there's a few other little differences, but that, that that's basically what it is. It's just kind of stripped down. Everything is a bit smaller, more compact. So. Anyhow, having explained all that, let's get right into it. And our first character who is acting is the dispatcher. And so uh, in the solo mode, you control three characters. Um, you take a turn with each character in turn, and then you go back up to the top. Uh, you have a hand of three cards that is shared by all three characters. And then you have something called the archive, which is over here. Right now I have two yellow cards and a red card in the archive and you can basically put as many cards as you want in the archive and you can move cards to and from the archive by being in the city um, that that card matches so for example i have in my hand this card for chicago 
If I'm in Chicago, I could use an action to move this to the archive. And in the archive, I have a card for Calgary. So if I was in Calgary, I could use an action to move this card into my hand. All right, so the first player who's gonna be acting is the dispatcher. I'm gonna be using my trusty TARDIS to track the character's turns. So the dispatcher's special thing is that he can move other players. So he can use an action to move a, another character from one spot to another spot. Um, that's one thing he can do. He can also, if this guy was even way over here, he could use an action to move them to a spot with any other character. So that's his special thing. He can use his actions to do that. So uh, I think what I want to do is I want to use his first action to set up the the medic's turn. So he's going to move the medic here for one action. He's got three more actions. So um, let's go ahead and move the Let's see. We can move the generalist, uh, which is the gray player, one space closer to Calgary, where we have a couple of cubes we need to deal with. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and then for my two remaining actions. Yeah, for my two remaining actions, I'll step over to Miami and remove one of those cubes. Okay. All right, so those are all the actions. Now we gotta draw two cards. Oh, we got two yellow cards, okay. New Orleans and Miami. And I am at five cards here, so that is uh, just one card away from reaching my hand limit. I'm noticing I have access between these two yellow cards here and these two yellow cards here, I have access to four yellow cards now. So that would be good um, to go ahead and get that cure for yellow. I just have to get these into my hand. Okay, but we did that. Now we do the infection step. So we flip over a couple of these cards and these will add cubes to the board. So we're going to add one to Chicago and one to Indianapolis. All right. So now it's going to be the medic's turn. So the medic for one action can remove all the cubes of a certain color in his city. So he'll get rid of those three blue cubes for one action. Second action to move there. Third action to move there. Fourth action to clear those. All right, that was a lot of cleanup in one turn. Now he's gonna draw a couple of cards. Okay, so he got another red card. That puts us at our hand limit. And we drew um, this crisis card. So crisis cards are another thing that's um, new to this version of the game. You don't have these in the base pandemic. And basically you can mix uh, either zero, three, or six of these into the player deck to get uh, different difficulty levels. So I'm playing with three in the uh, deck, so that's kind of the medium difficulty. And this one just says, resolve the draw infection cards step twice this turn. So, that's what we got to do. So we got to draw four of these. So the first two um, has us adding to Havana and New Orleans. And the next two have us going to Monterey and San Francisco. All right. Okay, now it's the generalist's turn. So. I was going to have the generalist head towards Calgary to take care of those uh, cubes there, but I'm thinking um, we have things pretty well under control as far as uh, disease cubes on the board. So his turn might be better spent, uh, or I should say her turn, it's a female character, so her turn might be better spent um, trying to get a cure. Well, if, he goes to, if she goes to Calgary, she could pull that card from the archives. So maybe we could do that. All right, we'll move her to Chicago. We'll put 
you know what, I'm not going to worry about putting Chicago in the archives. Um, it's the only blue card that we have. So I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so we'll leave Chicago alone. Um, so anyhow, we'll move one, two, three to Calgary, four to get that. We have to discard something. We'll discard Chicago. And we have one more action because the generalist, uh, her special thing is that she gets five actions. So we'll go ahead and remove one cube from Calgary. That makes sense, I think. All right. Very good, we get to draw a couple of cards, which we'll have to discard. Um, so, yeah. All right, so we didn't need to in it anyway. And then uh, we drew an epidemic. So when you draw an epidemic, there's three of these in the deck. Um, the first thing that you do is you increase the infection rate. That means more cards come out of this deck at the end of each turn. And then we have to infect the bottom city of this deck, which is Boston, and we have to add three to Boston, okay? All right, and then this goes into here. These get shuffled up and placed back on top of the infection deck. So let's go with that. All right, so at this point we're in pretty good shape as long as Boston isn't one of the two cards that we draw. So we'll see how that goes, but hopefully it won't be a problem. All right, and then we gotta go ahead and draw two of these to finish out that turn. All right, so Miami gets one and Indianapolis gets one. All right, well, we're safe for now. So the dispatcher, okay. Well, I think the dispatcher is going to want to either move to Atlanta and then move the generalist to Atlanta, or at the very least move the generalist to where uh, he is in Miami, because we want the generalist to be able to get to Atlanta and use these four cards. Oh wait, no, we don't need the generalist to do that, because everyone has shares the same hand of cards. So what am I even thinking? The dispatcher could just step over into Atlanta and cure the disease. That's so easy. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's so the solo rules <laughs> really help out a lot in that regard. Okay. So there we go. That's the, that's a good idea. Um, yeah. So the only other thing I can think of is maybe take a cube off of Miami while we're there. Well, I am worried about Boston um, becoming our first outbreak. So an outbreak is if you already have three cubes on a city like we do with Boston and you would have to add a fourth cube instead of adding the fourth cube, you move up this marker to track that you had an outbreak and you add a cube to each adjacent city. So I'd, I'd like to avoid that because that's one of the ways we can lose the game. So I could move, use one action to step over to Atlanta, second action to cure the red disease, third action uh, to jump over to Montreal because the medic is there, so the dispatcher can do that, fourth action to step over to Boston. So I can't get there. I really can't get there to cure it. Um, all right, so I might as well take that off the table. I'm not even going to consider that. So I am going to use an action to move to Atlanta, and I am going to use an action to cure red. The question is just, what do I do with my other two actions? I could move the medic over to Boston so that he'll be ready to cure on his, uh, on his turn, which will come next. So that'll save him one more, that'll save him one action on his next turn. Yeah, I could do that. It's not a bad idea. Um, the only other thing I could do is I need to start getting my four yellow cards together, which means visiting these two cities. So I could use a couple of actions to move the 
generalist closer to those. Um, all right, so I'll use one action to go to Atlanta. I'll use one action to cure red. And for my other two actions, I'll move the generalist closer to where those yellow cities are. All right, that's what we'll do. Now I get to draw a couple of cards. Okay, we have a blue for Montreal and a red for San Francisco. And then I'll draw a couple of cards from the infection deck. Okay, San Francisco just got one and Montreal just got one. All right, okay. Well, that's good, so Boston didn't uh, outbreak. So now it's the medic's turn, so he could, for one action, move over here. For a second action, get rid of all those. Then it's just, what does he do with his other two actions? Well, he could step back to Montreal. Or better yet, before he left Montreal, he could have gotten rid of this. And he could have put this in our archive while he was in Montreal. So we'll go with that. Just retroactively say that's what he did in that order. All right, that kind of frees up our hand a little bit. So because we're about to draw two more cards, I don't know what they're going to be. Um, but, you know, it just kind of frees up our hand a little bit. So we don't have to worry about hitting that hand limit. So now he's going to draw two cards. Oh, hey, very nice. He got two yellow cards. And we're going to draw two cards from here. All right, Atlanta got a cube, and New Orleans gets a cube. Okay. All right, and that was the medic's turn, so now it's the generalist's turn. So all the generalist needs to do is be in Atlanta to cure yellow. So we might as well get that done. He can go one, two, three. And then he has two more actions left. Um, hmm. He could uh, just clean up those cubes there in Atlanta. Or he could step down to Miami and take one of those cubes off. Um, if a disease is, cu is uh, cured, then when you treat the disease in, that, in any city, um, you actually remove all the cubes of that color. So, since yellow has been cured, I think maybe for his two remaining actions, uh, the generalist will step over here and get rid of both of those. Alright, so that'll be the end of her turn. She gets to draw two cards, another blue for Atlanta, oh, and an event. So there are uh, a few of these event cards in the deck. They do different things, they're all good. Um, this one lets you move one person to any city, and you can play those at any time um, to affect any character. Okay, and then we gotta infect a couple of cities. So Monterey gets another one, and Toronto gets another one. Okay, and now it is the dispatcher's turn. So we just need to get all our all our blues together, and we'll be good. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and move uh, the medic to Montreal so that he can pick up uh, this blue card again. It's kind of a waste for him to put it there, but I didn't know what. I was going to draw next, so it is what it is. I could use two actions to clear out these two in Atlanta. And then I would have one action left. Hmm. Well, I can go ahead and move uh, the generalist to New Orleans, kind of set him up for his next turn. All right. Draw two cards. Okay, we got another event, One Quiet Night, which lets us 
uh, skip the draw infection card step of a turn. And we drew our second epidemic. So we gotta up this. Gotta take one card off the bottom here. We add three cubes to Dallas. And we gotta shuffle these up. All right, well, as far as outbreaks go, the only place that's at risk at the moment is Dallas. Um, and as far as us winning, the main thing that's standing in the way right now is just getting the blue cards we need. We've got one in the archives that the medic is about to retrieve on their turn. But other than that, we just got to draw them. So... Hmm. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and play this event One Quiet Night so I don't have to draw any cards from that deck um, at this point. And then it'll just go straight to the medic's turn. The medic can use an action to retrieve the Montreal card from the archives since he's in Montreal. And then, uh, let's see, that was one action. Okay. We could go ahead and use airlift to move him to any city, so we'll move him to Dallas. And one of his special things is that um, if a, if a, city, if a, if a disease has been cured, then he automatically removes all the cubes of that color in a city when he enters it. So he will automatically remove these three red cubes without having to use an action. So, so far he's only used one action. So he could use his second action to move here, third action to get rid of those. Um, I guess fourth action to step over into Chicago so he can get a little closer to Toronto where we have two cubes. All right, looks good. So we draw two cards. Okay, we got a third blue card, that's good. And we have another crisis. This one has us draw the bottom card from the deck and put three cubes on that card. So, Santa Domingo. All right. Then we gotta do the infection step. That's three of these cards. All right, so we add one to Toronto. Oh, that brings it up to three. One to Miami. And one to Atlanta. Okay. All right, so the spots we have to worry about a little bit are Toronto and Santo Domingo, although we don't have to really worry about them until uh, we draw another epidemic, which mm, could be any turn now, I guess. But uh, it's the generalist turn, so the generalist could, um, let's see, they could cure where they are, then they, that'd be one action. Then they could go two, three, four, and for their fifth action, cure this. And that'll clear out a lot of the yellow. Okay, sounds good. And then draw two cards. Hopefully we get another blue. Yeah, all right. We got a red and a blue. So we are all set. Just gotta cash in those four blues for a cure. And let's see, three of these. All right, Indianapolis, New Orleans, and San Francisco. All right, and now it's the dispatcher's turn. The dispatcher is already in Atlanta. You can use one action to cure the blue disease 
And that is the end of the game. It's a pretty good uh, success right there. All right, so let's uh, go back up and talk about the game a little bit. All right, so that is Pandemic Hot Zone North America. As you can see, uh, it took me maybe 20 minutes to play through that. Not a very long game. One of the advantages of uh, Hot Zone over you know, uh, base pandemic or any of the other variants. Uh, at least I, I say it's an advantage. That, I guess, is a matter of what you're looking for. But I think it's cool to have a version of pandemic that you can play in like 20 minutes. Um, playing it multiplayer, it did take longer. Um, I think the multiplayer games that we played were more in the neighborhood of like 40 minutes, so twice as long with uh, multiple players. But uh, I thought a lot of that is just kind of um, the the table talk that comes with having multiple players. But even at 40 minutes, that's still a little bit shorter than I think your base pandemic. And uh, so that that's definitely an advantage of this version. Playing it solo was interesting. I hadn't done that before. Uh, I think playing solo makes it a lot easier, really, because uh, you don't have to worry about getting the right combination of cards into a single player's hand, because all of the characters are sharing a single hand of cards. So that makes it a lot simpler. Um, you probably noticed that uh, when I cured the first disease, I was kind of thinking like, okay, I've got all the cards, uh, I've got all four of whichever color it was, I think red. I had all four red cards, but I was like, all right, so now I just gotta wait for it to get back around to the generalist so that the generalist can go to Atlanta and cure it. And then I was like, I don't need to even wait for that because anybody, all the characters share those cards. So in a, in a multiplayer, um, each character would be controlled by a different player and they would have their own hand of cards. And so if, for example, it was the generalist who got those four red cards, you'd have to wait for the generalist turn to come around again for them to get back to Atlanta and cure the disease. So uh, the solo rules, I think, make it a lot easier. Um, I was playing on like a medium difficulty. I think it'd be interesting to try it again on, a, on the hardest difficulty and see what that's like solo. I still think it's going to be a lot easier than doing it multiplayer, but it might be at least more of a reasonable challenge. So, anyhow, um, yeah, overall the game went really smooth. Don't have much to comment on there. I will say, just again, I think it was mainly the, the solo rules that made it so much easier. Um, in my multiplayer uh, games of this, it was more difficult. It took us, I mean, we were all pretty experienced with playing different versions of Pandemic, and it took us three times, yeah, it took us three tries to beat it on the hardest mode. So. The game can be pretty challenging in multiplayer. Anyhow, that's a, a quick look at uh, Pandemic Hot Zone North America. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Nathan. This is Nice at Dice, and you enjoy the rest of your day.